special guest in the studio is with us, and we do appreciate her giving us this opportunity. Again, a lot of people want her time. A lot of people have been looking for her, but District Attorney Jackie Johnson is in the studio with us. And, Jackie, I appreciate you coming in. Thank you, Bob. Need to get a little bit closer to the microphone. Okay. I want to start with uh, you addressing in your press release, but I want to start with the accusation by the two Glen County Commissioners, Peter Murphy and Alan Booker, because yes. they came out this past Friday. They're on TV saying that they wanted – or that they talked with the Brunswick police and that the police stated they wanted to make an arrest right away, but you advised them not to. Any truth to that? No, that's absolutely, absolutely not true. I was watching uh, television Friday night, and I saw my face flash up there, and then I saw that quote, and I was just – Horrified because that's so far from from the truth. It's just a straight up lie, um, and so um, you know I'm, I'm I'm devastated by this. Twenty years of working in um, in the criminal justice system and holding the law and trying to do things right, and then you have two people say this, and it just catches national media as if it's the truth, and it's been reported over and over again, and nobody is reporting that it came from the Glen County Police Department. Um, which at the time uh, when all of this was going on, um, you know, really for probably over the last couple of years, um, we've had some corruption issues in the Glen County Police Department, and my office has been um, at the forefront of trying to deal with some of those and at the same time walk a line where we still have to help the police because that's our job and take their cases. Um, however, um, there are some, some bad apples over there, and we've brought that to the attention of the county commission. There's been a grand jury uh, presentment from um, last summer. Um, there's been an indictment on four current or former police officers over there, including the police chief. So the people that are putting these lies out there have an incentive to put them out there. That's not getting reported. Why do you think those two men would make this statement? Do you have any idea why they would go on TV and state a total lie? I think it's I think it's retaliation for, 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 for me being the whistleblower on their police department Multiple times over the last, you know, over the last year, I've met with different county commissioners. I've met with the county administrator. I've met with the county attorney, uh, asking them to look at the issues at the Glen County Police Department and um, and to no avail. And so, at some point, um, when when we had to dismiss 18 months worth of drug cases because of misconduct within the drug squad. Um, the GBI came in and started an investigation, and we had hearings. Um, all of these things started coming out, and I said, you know, I can't turn a blind eye just because it's the chief of police or other police officers involved. The district attorney has, a, has an obligation to uh, enforce the laws to police officers, to any other, just like they do any other citizen. And so um, in uh, November of this past year, um, I, I brought in um, a special prosecutor, a uh, retired DA from Clayton County. I said, here's what I've got. Look at this and tell me, do you think this merits going forward with any criminal charges? And she spent over a month looking at everything, and she decided to go to grand jury with those charges. And that grand jury was three days after the shooting occurred. So um, the, a, a lot of the people that are putting this information out there I, I believe um, are doing it as a consequence of our um, trying to do our duty with respect to uh, some of the um, uh, administration and leadership over at the Glen County Police Department. Let's go over your timeline because that's what's in question. You know, when did you recuse yourself? You know, how soon did you recuse yourself? You know, a lot of people don't understand how the law works. You know, the shooting takes place, police department shows up, they're the ones that investigate, and they're the ones that decide whether it's going to be arrested or whatever, right? I mean, that's only, how it works. Only law enforcement officers have arrest powers in the state of Georgia. The district attorney's role is somewhat of a check and balance on law enforcement and to advise them on the law. Um, district attorneys cannot arrest, and it's not our it's not our job to arrest. It's the job of a law enforcement officer to make a probable cause determination. That means more probably than not, a crime occurred in this county, and this person committed this crime. That's what they have to determine at the time um, when they when they when they're on the scene when they're investigating the case. Um, February twenty third was my mother's birthday. Um, I was at her birthday party. We were down at Jekyll having a birthday party for my mom, and um, I did not talk to Glen County Police that day. Um, I, I, um, one of my investigators contacted me and said he had heard something about there was a shooting in, in that neighborhood and, and he may, and my investigator may be involved, or my former investigator. And I told the person that called me, I says, look, we cannot be involved in that. We cannot go out there. We cannot do anything. And that was the last I, I talked with anybody that day until later on that evening when I got contacted by, uh, my assistant district attorney saying, hey, 
police need some advice, and, and that's kind of where it went from there. And, and two, two assistant district attorneys had um, conversations with law enforcement officers that day. And um, it's my belief, of course, I wasn't a party to the conversation, that immediately they said we have a conflict of interest and we can't be involved. So no one in your office advised them not to make an arrest either, right? No. So that's just a total that's another not falsehood. True. That's so. not true. I, I've got two attorneys. I trust them. It, it, it would not have been their, their duty or their obligation or their job to tell them one way or the other whether or not to make an arrest. Um, I did reach out to try to get them once I found out that they needed some advice and we could not advise them. I did reach out to the neighboring district attorney's office to try to get an attorney over there to advise them the following day. And that's um, and that was, um, I contacted George Barnhill on the way across circuit and he indicated to me that he had an assistant that was one of his attorneys that was going to be in court in Brantley County and so um, she would be able to come over and ultimately uh, that's what happened the following day. So you you requested Barnes. So Barnhill has come in the question too because he has a connection with the office as well. Apparently, his son worked in the DA's office or works in the DA's office. He does. He does. So and why and didn't why didn't we know that? And why did we go to Barnhill? So that's that's a big question, for people. Why why go him knowing there's a conflict already? At the time, I was concerned about the conflict my office had. And I really didn't feel like it was a good idea, for knowing what, what the gravity of the situation was, for us to just tell the police, sorry, we can't help you. Um, in retrospect, us trying to do a good deed and get them some help and guidance to, 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 do, to do their job, essentially, um, is, is now being used against me. I reached out over there, and I think it's important to note, there's you know 10 or 12 lawyers in that circuit, just like there is in ours. Um, we r- routinely handle each other's cases as far as conflicts go. And it being the nearest DA's office, I just wanted to be able to try to get them somebody initially um, to help them make a decision. I didn't expect or or um, try to direct him in any way other than, hey, will you go over and see if you can help him? And this is a part, point that needs to be clarified. Hopefully you can clarify it. You recommend, but who appointed Barnhill? Was he appointed by you and or was he appointed by I didn't recommend. I, didn't inter- recommend. Yeah. I, just, yeah. I just asked him to come over and see if he could help them or get somebody over there that could help them the following day. And I think it's important to know, initially the call came in um, and, and it was represented to my to me. What I got from my assistant district attorneys is this is a burglary and this looks like self-defense. That was from the first thing I heard about this case. And that's all I knew is this was a burglary, and it looks like it was self-defense. And where did that come from? Um, That came from uh, conversations I had with my assistants who had spoken with the police there that day. But Barnhill, again, I'm still trying to clarify, how did he get appointed the case? I mean, did he get appointed by the attorney general, or did he get appointed by um, the – how does it it work? I mean, After I got back to my office, um, I um, – did a letter this happened on a sunday the date on the letter i had some um trouble getting in contact with the right person david mclaughlin who used to be at that office um he handles those um those conflicts well i didn't know that he had subsequently retired so initially i sent the letter to the wrong person it was uh dated february 25th i'm not sure if i made a phone call up there trying to find out at some point who i needed to send it to but we eventually sent a second one to the correct person on February 27th. So we sent two letters up there, and uh, Barnhill was appointed by the Attorney General subsequent to that. I didn't talk with anybody at the Attorney General's office and tell them who to, who to appoint. I just conflicted my office out, and I knew they would go through their procedure on how they would appoint. Another big question people have, and I'm trying to get this as well, the timeline of the video. Was the video available as soon as the incident took place to the police department did the police department have the video did you have the video did you see the video did barnhill see the video or did the video come out when everybody else Bob, saw the video i saw this video last week on television for the first time so you saw it the same time everybody i else. saw it the same time everybody else did and we know that barnhill saw the video i don't know what the police you know and barnhill talked about you know i have no reason to believe that they didn't try to make an honest decision at the time but i don't know what evidence was available what evidence they had I didn't go to the police department. I didn't look at the evidence because I knew I couldn't be involved in the case. So I facilitated him to go and help them. 
from that point on, I didn't want to know about the evidence, and I didn't ask about the evidence, and I didn't I didn't go and look at the evidence. Um, I um, I saw the video again and the uh, first time last week. So you don't know if the police department had the video from the outset or not? I don't know what you they don't have. know if Barnhill had the video before he made this recommendation because I, that's I what looks know. bad. He you know what looks bad is it looks like without the video these guys are going to walk because Barnhill gave out. How unusual is that for a DA to make a statement like that? That in his legal opinion that they shouldn't be arrested and charged. Isn't that unusual? I don't know if it's what did he, what did he based that on. I don't know if it's unusual or not because I don't know what his process was, and I don't know what he saw and what he discussed with the police because I wasn't a party to any of that. And one thing that people need to understand: Georgia law, you're allowed to make us explain that. A lot of people don't understand that because that's what the McMichaels are claiming. They're claiming self-defense. They're claiming they had the right to make a citizen's arrest. They thought he was a robber in the neighborhood. Explain the Georgia law where a person can make a citizen's arrest. I don't. I'm not familiar with all of that, and you're I'm not, not familiar. I, I, I have been intentionally ignorant about the facts and law of this case because right. I knew I could not have any involvement in the case. All right. Um, the one mistake I made in this case, again, was trying to be helpful to the police because I knew it was a serious situation and, and somebody needed to make a decision about what needed to happen. We couldn't be involved, and so I offered to try to get help from a neighboring circuit. And, um, and, and in doing that, um, you know, I, co- I contacted the closest person I know who handles a lot of conflicts um, and, and tried to get him over there to give them some help. And from that point on, I've, I've been out of this case. Um, I have... Um, had contact with some of the victim's family, and I got some of some questions with some um, uh, pastors and people came to see me in Brunswick as the case was going on um, because they were concerned about it. And so I was concerned that the process work and then it move along. So um, when uh, Barn- Mr. Barnhill conflicted out hip from him, um, it was important to me that, um, you know, the case continued to move. So um, after that, um, uh, I met with... Um, I guess it was the mayor and some other local leaders, and I assured them, you know, that um, that you know the process was why I couldn't be involved. The process was going to take its, its course, and I uh, I did facilitate making sure that once um, we found out that Tom Durden would be appointed to the case, you know, we did get with um, Glen County, make sure that we expedited getting that file up there too, uh, Mr. Durden, because I wanted the case to move as quickly as possible. Everybody you talk to, everybody you see, the GBI, everybody saw his press conference. He, Everybody claims and common sense says, why wasn't the GBI called in immediately? You know, we have the answer to that because when the shooting the takes place in here, because I, you know, I mean, that's what most people do. The police department, sheriff's department says, look, we don't want to handle this. Let's call the GBI in for you know smart purposes. We, they don't, first of all, they don't want to be involved. Bob, we, would, we, would, we wouldn't be so, talking yeah. if the GBI... Why wasn't the GBI called in? That's the big, and, and I don't know the answer to that. I can but speculate. that's the $64,000 question. Well, right? I can tell you this. I've got nine police departments in five counties. I've got five sheriff's offices. And I can tell you on any given occasion, if something of this of this level happens, typically the GBI is called in. It's up to the law enforcement agency um, to make that determination. As to, 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 For example, the Jessup Police Department can call and. Me not being on the scene and not knowing the information, I, 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 that's not something I feel is in my purview. I feel it's in the law enforcement office's purview. So At this go- time, when this, when this case happened, I will say we were three, three days from going into a grand jury um, on, with, re, with an indictment, proposed indictment against the chief of police, and a lot of the material and, and, and things contained in that indictment emanated from a GBI investigation in which the Glen County had called in the GBI a year ago. And so I can't help but think that maybe some of the reluctance to, to initially call the GBI on that day um, had something to do with that, the fact that there was an indictment pending or, or, or there was a, a grand jury pr- proceeding pending and that there had been notice that the police chief was under consideration for indictment. And a lot of that stemmed from an earlier GBI investigation from the year previous. Right. I don't know if that kept them from calling the GBI. That could be a reason they didn't call the GBI. I don't know. I wish they had called the GBI. So I guess, Jake, the person who would have called the GBI would be the acting police chief, right? Well, so he, but, the, but the acting police chief came in after all of this happened. At the time, the chief police was John Powell. Oh, so he was still the police John, chief at that time. Chief, John so, Powell was still so the he chief police. The one, but he's under indictment. And now he's under indictment. Right. And, and, and I, you know, again, I don't know directly where who's but, saying these well, lies I, out there. Well, I have been told that one of the sources for the lies would be the, the – 
police chief that's under indictment. Right, but see, that's the part that the national media has totally ignored. They're not going back to that fact. They don't mention that fact, and that seems to have played a, you know, just looking at it totally, that seems to have some part in why the GBI wasn't called in. The GBI, you know, indicted the police chief at the time. He's under indictment, so there seems to be some bad feelings between the police department and the GBI, so maybe that's why the GBI wasn't called in. I'm just, you know... Throw that out there. That's something that has not been reported. The fact that the current or the police chief at the time is under indictment, and there's several officers also under indictment as well, right? In that department, That's he's not the only one. So, I mean, so former officers, former officers. So they're no yes. longer with the police department. Yes. Are they on administrative leave like the police chief, or are they been let go? Um, I I know that um. The police chief is right now on administrative leave with pay. The rest, I can't really speak to the circumstances of why and how they left, but they're not employed there now. You sent out a press release, you know, at least defending yourself. You know, do you think this has helped since you released the press release, you know, stating basically that these two commissioners are making these false statements? Do you think it's helped? Or I mean, there seems to be a firestorm. There's a firestorm. People are calling for your head. They there's want a, you to resign. They want you out. I mean. There's a firestorm. And, you know, a lie, you know, makes it around the world a couple of times before the truth gets the chance to get out there. And all I can rely on is, you know, the people that know me and know that I wouldn't do something uh, of this of this magnitude. I mean, I, 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 I'm just, uh, you know, I, all I can, I don't fear the truth. You know, I, I don't fear the truth, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that this is investigated, investigated by the Attorney General, by the Department of Justice, and they can see what I did and see what we were doing was just trying to make the best decisions that, as we could at the time, and, and, and we were not trying to do, do anything to manipulate this case. Rather, we were trying to stay out of this case, but at the same time as District Attorney, while I'm trying to stay out of the case, I feel like I've got an obligation to try to make sure the case moves forward like it should. Right. Did you just join us? A good segue. If you just joining us, District Attorney Jackie Johnson in the studio with us talking about the case that's gotten national attention. Uh, good segue because the Georgia Attorney General Chris Gar over the weekend has asked the Department of Justice to investigate the investigation into Ahmaud Arbery's death. Gar has requested Bobby Christine, U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Georgia, to lead and complete a transparent review of how the case was handled from the outset. Gar says we've requested the involvement of the DOG, DOJ since we first took this case, he says there are too many questions about how this case was handled and why it took 74 days for arrest to be made and two people charged with Arbery shooting death. Carr says the actions of two South Georgia District Attorneys, Jackie Johnson of the Brunswick Judicial Circuit and George Barnhill of the Waycross District, figure to be central to the federal probe. So I'll ask you, have you talked to this investigator from the DOJ's office, or have you talked to the Attorney General at all, or where do we I, stand I, on that? I have not. I expect there to be an investigation, and when, when this kind of this, these kind of lies get out there and get reported, it's got to get cleared up. And, and, I, and I welcome this investigation because I know that when you – I, I have to rely on my faith and experience in the court system. You know, when you do an investigation, you have to talk to actual witness. It can't be he said, I heard, she said – that, that kind of stuff doesn't enter into it. It's based on what actual um, witnesses and evidence um, can, can provide. And, and I'm hopeful that, you know, an investigation is going to show the truth of what happened here. How soon did, how much, how much have you talked to Barnhill? You know, Barnhill on the day of the shooting told police he believed that McMichael said just caused to pursue Arbery, who they suspect was a burglary in the neighborhood. Barnhill says Arbery was the aggressor and that McMichael was acting in self defense. How much conversation did you have with Barnhill? Has he relayed that impression to you, or have you talked to him since this? Have you re, since you recused he, yourself? When or? he um, when he sent his letter, um, I, I spoke with him that day. He had sent a copy of that letter, but he had said that he felt like he needed to recuse and that you know somebody else needed to look at it. So I reviewed the letter that day. So I did speak with him that day. Um, I've probably spent the you know other than you know we we talk about other things incidentally. So I don't know. You know, there's probably some other conversations I've had with him, but specific to this case, the only only thing uh, of substance was when that letter, basically he's calling to say, hey, Jackie, I'm getting out of this case. Somebody else is going to have to take it, and I've sent you a copy of this letter I've sent to the to the police department. And once again, you know, people tune in. Uh, go, again, go over the timeline from the shooting to how soon you recused yourself from this case. How, how soon did that take well, place? Well, both of my both of my attorneys that spoke with the police that day said we've got to recuse. We've got a conflict of interest. Both of them told them that that day. Um, 
I contacted Barnhill that day to try to get an attorney over there and said, look, we're not going to be able to help them. You know, can you can you send somebody to talk to them tomorrow? And at that point, um, I was out of it as far as I was concerned. And on um, the 25th, I actually got my letter to Atlanta. That would have been a Tuesday. Um, I got the letter to Atlanta, um, went to the wrong person. We made a subsequent letter up there on the 27th, which would have been Thursday. Again, this has gained national attention. Everybody in the world's weighed in on it, made comments about it. You know, LeBron James, the president, Joe Biden. I mean, it's amazing how much attention this has gotten. And again, the question remains about the video. You know, the question is without the video, would there have been arrest at all? You know, and I still I'd like to know what the timeline on the video was. The video made available at the outset, or did the video just come to light a couple of days ago or about a week ago when? Everybody saw it on the national news. You have any idea about the timeline on the video? I don't. I don't know um, what was available at the time because I don't know what the evidence is in the case. What do we know? I, about I, the, I, I know that I saw that video on television last week. And what do we know about the person that did the video? I saw his attorney and his fiance on TV last night. They're getting death threats. They're saying he was just a bystander. He saw this taking place. He just filmed it. And like I said, my question is, did he? Everybody asked the question, did he withhold the video, or he said he's fully cooperated. But I just wonder, the, the video just seems to be what caused the firestorm. My question is, when, when did the video become available to the police? When did the video become available to Barnhill? You know, did they have access to that video before they made these statements, or did they not have the video? And I don't know the answer a, to that, Bob. I, I know that, that I know that they went out there and they collected evidence. I'm and, sure that's and, a question that the DOJ is going to get. To the I'm sure of. they will. <laughs> I, what the, what the substance of the evidence was, I do not know because again, I did not go over there. I did not look at the evidence, and I and I, and I remained uh, away from the evidence and the case because I was recused. Right. And where this goes forward is they've been arrested, they've been charged. They've been denied bond, but they've got to go before a superior court judge. That'll be the next step, right? They'll be before a superior court judge and seek a bond. He can give it or deny it, and then it'll proceed to the court system. Correct. Like all cases do, right? Like any other case, that's correct. And like they, somebody said wisely, you know, that's why we have a justice system. That's why we have a court system. Thank goodness for that because you don't because, convict because the, because on the truth a 20-second video. Because <laughs> the truth is ultimately going to come out, and, and, and it's hard for people to see things like this on television and hear the things that they've heard on me for the last three days and not come to some sort of opinion or conclusion. But ultimately, whatever's going to happen on this case has got to be based on evidence and, and facts and what actually happened, the truth. And, I, you know, I, I don't fear the truth. You know, I, I fear lies. I fear people trying to spin things for an agenda. Um, but, but I don't fear the truth. And the big question is what took place before the video started. You know, what led to that? You know, normal people just don't drive down and pull guns on people and... So, I mean, it's, there's a lot of questions out there that still haven't been answered. I think there are a lot and of people questions. People just that need to sit back and wait until it plays out and, That's correct. and not make a judgment until all the facts are out there. So, I mean, it's a horrific thing to see on video. It's a sad thing for anybody to lose their life, but. There's two sides to each story, and that's why you have a court system. That's why you have a judicial system, and it'll play out in the court system. But all this people, vigilante justice, calling for people's heads, I mean, it's just, we've seen this before. We saw this, you know, people jump to conclusions, and then when the facts come out, it's not what everybody thought it was. So, But, again, I, I appreciate you coming here and being on the Butch and Bob Show. Again, well, I just I, want you, know, you to I, clarify I, I, that the, I, those statements by the county commissioners – I, I, you know, I have accurate. to. You, you know, I, all I have is my name, Bob. You know, and how people, long have you been district? You've been, I've been district attorney since 2010. I've been a right. prosecutor for 20 plus years. Um, I take that responsibility very seriously. I feel like in my 20 years, I've been able to help a lot of people. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of people have reached out to me in Wayne County and, and said, "Jackie, we know, we know you, and we know you wouldn't do something like this." And I and I just want to thank those people because that means the world to me. When you're seeing, you know, your life flash before you and your your your, your reputation trashed all over the weekend, you know, um, it means a lot that the people that that care about you and know you and they know what kind of person you are would reach out to me and and, and offer their support because. Ultimately, again, the truth is going to come out on all this stuff. It's going to be painful for me and my office in the process because we're under a cloud now because of this national news media that's based on a lie. Um, but we're going to cooperate and, 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 and be confident that we've done the right thing. We did the best we could at the time. 
Um, everything we've done is, is now being kind of put a spin on in retrospect, and, and, that's, and that's being done, I think, to make this look nefarious from the start. Um, when from the very beginning, all we wanted to do was try to help the police do what they needed to do on an important case, and we knew that our office could not be involved. Yeah, so emphasize once again, you know, the accusation came out of the weekend that you told police officers not to make an arrest at the outset, and that's totally false. That's totally false. I, Jackie Johnson never talked to law enforcement officers that day. None of them. None of them. And no one in your office talked to anyone at that Yes. Two assistant district attorneys talked in my office okay. to them that day. Did they recommend not to make charges? No, or? absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. So how soon do you think the – Department of Justice will be reaching out to you, and how soon you, know, you look forward to talking I'll to them? I look forward to talking to them. I hope, you know, I, you know, what I hate about these things is I know the nature of these things. They don't tend to go very, you know, quickly, but I'm hoping that it'll, it'll move along and, and we can clear this up sooner rather than later. Yeah, and the video, the guy that did the video, like I said, his attorney's on TV. And they're saying now he's under suspicion. You know, do you think he should be charged in any way? Does Georgia law, you know, I know there's no – texting and driving how about video and driving so he's driving down the road videotaping this i mean does he face any charges in that or without, you think he's with, just a good citizen that he, his attorney claims him to be without knowing all the facts and knowing all the evidence in the case bob i couldn't, I couldn't make a decision right. i couldn't I gotcha. so have you ever been in a firestorm like this before <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the first where i have become the story and you know as a prosecutor you don't want to be the story i want my I, I want it to be about the cases, the victims we represent, the work we do at the courthouse. And, you know, I've spent the last 20 years trying to make it about that, and now it's about me. And, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not happy about that, um, but I've got to deal with that. And um, I'm confident that, you know, at, at, at when, when if people can, you know, wait for all the facts to come out, you know, they'll see that I was trying to do do the best I could at the time under the circumstances, and I didn't I didn't have any ill intent here other than to make sure that the police had what they needed to do their job and that the case moved along. Well, when you watch this national news or local news and they say all these false statements, do you scream at the TV or do you want to, or are you looking to talk to these people? Because everybody seems to be looking for you. And like I said, I appreciate you being here on the Butch and Bob show. This is the first time you've spoken since this uh, began and we appreciate you being here. But, you know, are you ready to talk to those people and clarify these statements or what are you planning and what's your plan from this point forward i don't know bob i you know i, I you know based on what's being put out there on, on television i don't know that it, it makes a lot of sense for me to join in and try to fight fake news and you know i just you know that's just the way i feel about it um i know you you you've got an interest in wayne county um you cover the courthouse you cover what our office does you cover sports you you care about this community so you care about trying to get it right um because you live here and you're vested here um, the news media in Atlanta, in, in, in Washington, in New York, um, they're looking for a sensational story that gets headlines and can carry the news cycle and get ratings, and it, it might tear the community apart. I mean, this has been devastating on, 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 on Glen County, um, on the people in that neighborhood, um, on, the, on the family down there. I mean, this has just been de- devastating for our community. And a lot of outside forces have come in, and Glen County has been the subject of it. And it's not people that care about getting it right. Um, I'm ha- I sat down with the Brunswick News on Saturday and tried to explain some some of what happened, you know, with them, um, and explain that this is all, you know, this is just a straight up lie that what's been being put out there. So I'm happy to sit down because again, that's a newspaper that's got a hundred year history in that county, and they want to try to get it right. So to the extent that someone wants to talk with me, and I feel like they're intentions are honorable and they want to try to get the story out there um i'm happy to talk with them but you know it it, it, based on what i'm seeing i'm not so sure you can say that about national media at this point well you're seeking a third term again we do have an election coming up so people in wayne county are going to make a decision when they go to the voting booth you've been a friend of this program since you've been at da we have you on here many times like i said you know how this program works we're just trying to get the information out to our listened audience let them hear from those involved again You've been attacked ever since this began. Uh, what part of recuse yourself from the case uh, seems to be getting lost from a lot of people. But, again, that's why I want you to give your timeline. You recused yourself almost immediately after this event took place because you knew there were conflicts involving your office. Yes. So why, I don't understand why that's not being made clear. That doesn't fit the, 
the sensational narrative that I'm the bad guy here, and you know this is a, this is a horrible tragedy, and people see, can't see that video and not, and not just be, you know, they're not just be sick about it, and you know, and it's hard to see something like that and not believe something nefarious went on. It's hard to, and so and so I think now now that it's out and the way things have happened, there there's, there tends to be. Um, an incentive to go out back and put a spin on it that, 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 that there's corruption and collusion and all kinds of things were going on that just were not. That's just that's just not what happened. Um, and as far as the election goes, that's not until November. Um, I've got a lot of, of things to do between now and November, uh, one of which is cooperate with this investigation and, and hope, hopefully let the truth come out. Um, and maybe the truth will come out by November. I hope that it does. Um, and if it doesn't, I just have to rely on the people in Wayne County and the rest of the other counties to, to, to base their decision on what they know about me and my character and their dealings with my office and not based on what they're seeing on television. How difficult has this been for your family? You know, you're, you've been in this, you're, you've been in the political field for quite some time. You know how it plays out, but this is going to be tough for your family to see. Well, it was a there. tough Mother's Day because, um, it's hard on my mom. Well, again, we appreciate you coming in. It's always good to see you. Like I said, I appreciate you answering these questions. Uh, again, the video is, the, to me, the question, when did the video become available? I think that's a big point because that's that's the narrative that's being out there. Without the video, there may have not have been arrest at all. You know, the GBI made it clear that watch the video. There's definite, definite probable cause to make an arrest. So why Mr. Barnhill came out quickly and said, in his legal opinion, there was not enough to make an arrest of the act in self-defense. Uh, I guess he'll have to answer that, and I'm sure the Department of Justice will be asking him that question. I can't speak for what his process was or what his decision-making process. All I can say is I've known George Barnhill for many years as a prosecutor um, over in the Waycross Circuit, and, you know, I, I, I've relied on him over the years. I, know, I consider him a man of integrity, and I know that he would have had some reasoning for coming to the conclusions that he did. That's all I can say. But again, he was not appointed by you. He no. was just you just made the recommendation, All right? Once I, you recuse yourself, you make I, a, I didn't make any recommendation. Make, sorry, all so I did was clarify try, what you did. There. All I did was try to get them some help until the attorney general could appoint someone to handle this case. That's all I was trying to do. I wasn't trying to say you handle the case. All I was trying to do was say we can't help you. Let me get a neighboring DA circuit over there to try to give you all some advice until the attorney general can appoint someone on this case. That's all I intended to do. So the attorney general was the person that appointed Barnhill. And then when Barnhill recused himself, then he stepped in and appointed Tom Durden. That's who's got that, it right that, now. That, the is, head of the that is the sequence of events. And Tom Durden has the case now. That's and he's correct. been attorney. For a long time. Tom right Durden's been in a district attorney in the um, Atlanta right. Circuit I've for 20 in, plus right. years. I've seen him cover court cases over there in uh, Long County many times. I've seen him in court. Like, he's been there many, many years. And, and before the video came out last week, um, Tom Durden actually did a press release um, saying that he had reviewed everything and he intended on proceeding to a grand jury. So Tom Durden came to a different conclusion than George Bornhill did. And again, I can't. I can't explain that because I don't know what they saw and I don't know what they looked at because I don't know the facts of this case. And so I can't really I can't really weigh in on that right now because um, I, I've never looked at the evidence in the case. Only thing I've seen is this video that came out last week. Right. And you're not involved in the case at all at this point. No. I mean, you recused yourself That's early correct. on. So. That's correct. So you still don't know why these two commissioners went out publicly and made these <laughs> comments? I don't think it had anything to do with the fact that I had their police chief under indictment who works for them, and, and they're not very and, – and, you know, there's there's another ongoing political battle in Glen County. And when all of these things have come out um, as to the police department and some of the things that have been going on in the last year, um, the grand jury recommended that the citizens of Glen County – be allowed to vote on whether or not they want to continue to have a police department. Most counties, as in Wayne County, don't have a county police department. The sheriff is is, is responsible for county law enforcement, and then you have a city police department. Um, the Glen County citizens um, uh, have never been able to vote on whether or not they want a police department. So one of the things the grand jury recommended last summer was that the citizens be allowed to vote. And one of the things I've done, I try not to be political, but things were so um, the, the situation had gotten so bad with, with some of the things going on at the, at the police department and the recommendations of the grand jury, I made those available to um, 
Senator William Ligon and um, Representatives Don Hogan and Jeff Jones, I made those available, and Senator Ligon actually took and and um, uh, sponsored a bill up in Atlanta to allow the citizens to vote on um, vote on whether or not to continue to have a police department. The county commission has adamantly opposed that. And so we're on opposite sides of a political issue where, you know, from, from my standpoint, I have supported the citizens of Glen County being able to vote on whether or not they want to have a police department. The county commission, of course, is opposed to that. Well, we'll close on this. You've always been for justice, and I'm sure you want to see justice in this case as well, right? I want the truth to come out because I feel like if the truth comes out, Bob, people will see um, that, that, you know, this for what it was people trying to make decisions under the best circ- best they could under the circumstances at the time, and that's essentially what it is. I know it's easy to spin things in hindsight, but at the time, the people in my office and me, um, we were doing the best to make decisions under the circumstances. Okay. We'll end on that note again. I appreciate, again, you coming in and being here on the Butch and Bob Show. Like I said, this is your first public comments since all this began, the firestorm underway since the video got out. So, Again, I appreciate you using this venue to come talk with us. And, uh, again, always good to see you, and you're welcome anytime. And if you need to come back, we'd love to have you back. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Okay, dope. That's going to do it for today's World Famous Butch and Bob Show for a Monday. World Famous Butch and Bob Show on WIFO brought to you this morning by Murphy Builder Supply and Nymphs Car Wash. 8.35 on this Monday morning, 11th day of May. Let's get an update from Fox News Radio. Good morning from the big dog. Woody Folsom Automotive's maintaining our social distancing, giving...